So, so far in this lab, you have entered in parameters in a couple of different ways. Uh, one, you've been prompted for them interactively um, if, you, if it is a required parameter and you haven't specified at any point. Uh, so that's at submission time using the CLIs. Um, the other place you've done it is using it in line. So with PowerShell, it creates those switches on the fly based on the name of those parameters, which is why you can't have parameters in your templates for PowerShell which conflicts with any existing names, such as name. Um, and for the CLI, you've got a couple of options there, either specifying JSON, or you can specify just name equals value pairs in a space delimited list. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to create a parameter file. Um, this is very useful, particularly if you have multiple customers uh, or partners, um, and you want to specify a different parameter file for information specific to um, that particular customer. Um, so we're going to create a new file. Let me just bring up the file explorer on the left hand side. So within our lab one folder, I'm going to create a new file and that's going to be called Azure deploy.parameters.json. It can be called anything you like, but this is the convention. Um, and as you can see, that's opened it um, up the top. Now you can use Control, Alt, and left and right to move these around. So I'm going to do just that, or you can drag and drop them now. Uh, using the new VS code. So that's now side by side. I'm also going to do control B to close down the sidebar, give myself a bit of space. And let's just move it up so I can see which parameters we have there. Now I've got focus within the parameters.json file. If I type ARMP, um, then it should automatically show the skeleton for the template. Now notice this has a different schema compared to the main Azure Deploy JSON. Um, it's very limited in what it can have. It just has a parameter section with it, as well as schema and content version. And the parameter section itself is fairly limited as to what it can have. So I'm going to enter in two parameters here. So I'm, again, I'm going to type RMP. Um, this time, rather than choosing skeleton or the parameter, which is what we used over here when we're actually declaring our parameters, we're now going to specify a parameter value. Okay, And that parameter value is going to be storage account prefix. And I'm going to specify a value, which is going to be RI Cheney SA, just to show that it's different to STG, which is the default value on the left hand side. Okay, if I just move the down there, then if I put comma and then enter, then we should be able to put in another parameter value. And now I'm going to go for account type. And the value we're going to have here is going to be standard underscore LRS, which again is the default, but we're going to make it explicit within this. So let's just save that. Again, there should be no problems in that file there. As you can see, we can shrink up parameters and it closes everything down. We can close down the individual parameters within it and they're all neatly aligned. So that is a good parameter file. Okay. So if we then open up here, go back into the lab one folder. So now we've got both the Azure Deploy and the parameters file. If you want to submit using this, then you can do AZ group deployment create. So that justified by now. And then go specify again the resource group we're submitting into, which is lab one, the template file, which is Azure deploy.json and then the parameters, which rather than having name equals value as a list, we're going to use the at operator to signify that it's a file and then put as your deploy.parameters.json. So that is the full command for that. Enter, then again, it should validate both of those files, both the Azure deploy.json template file and the Azure deploy parameters.json file. And then if everything is good, then it'll submit those and we should get the resulting storage account with RI chain ESA as the prefix for it instead.